If you're like me, you probably have a never-ending pile of books on your reading list. Reading is a fantastic way to learn and grow, but all too often we forget all our aha moments the second we put down the book. Frustrating, right? Luckily, a German scientist developed a powerful note-taking system 80 years ago and used it to write more than 70 books and nearly 400 articles. Yes, I'm talking about Settlecasten, one of the most popular note-taking methods on productivity YouTube. But we will be doing Settlecasten not just with one, but with two cool little twists. First, what I'm going to share with you today is a simplified approach to the Zettelkasten method. You see, Zettelkasten is awesome, but it was developed to write academic papers. And let's be honest, most of us don't need to adhere to academic standards when it comes to our notes. I'd much rather have a system that does 80% of the job and that is easy enough to stick with long term than having the perfect but over-engineered system that I continuously fail to apply. And second, we're going to use a new note-taking tool that's just a perfect match for this method. Of course, you can apply these same principles to any tool, but again, this note-taking tool does a really great job when it comes to Zettelkasten. I'm going to walk you through this method in three steps. First, we're going to identify what's worth writing down in the first place. Then, in the second step, we think about how we can write things down the most effective way. And last but not least, we look at how we can use our notes to then actually do something with them. First up, what to write down in the first place. Typically, our problem with note-taking starts far before it actually comes to choosing the perfect note-taking app or system. It's the question, well, what should I actually write down? And that comes down really to three problems mainly. First, we're never really taught what we're supposed to write down. You see, in school, note-taking is focused very linearly on passing the exam. And there's usually a teacher or later in university, a professor who will tell you exactly, well, this is relevant and this isn't. Outside of school or university, all of a sudden, there's no one who tells you what matters. So it's up to you to start deciding. The second big problem when it comes to deciding what to write down is the scarcity mindset. And the scarcity mindset is this idea in the back of your head that when you look at something and you think, oh, this might be interesting, that goes and says, well, this could be really important and I'm not sure whether we ever come across this again, so better make sure we write it down. It's this idea that if you find something good or find something that might be important, that later in the future you will never have another way to retrieve it. Which, if we're completely honest to ourselves, is highly unlikely. A, usually you can just Google something and will come back, so as long as you remember somewhat what to ask for, you will find something relevant to it. And B, good ideas are not limited, right? Even if that good idea doesn't come back to you, another one will. And there are anyway more ideas than you could ever possibly read or take notes on. So, you know, why this one and not the next one? And last but not least, having unclear goals. Not knowing what you actually take notes for makes it really, really hard. I started taking notes when I fell down this productivity rabbit hole on YouTube, but I didn't really have an objective in mind. And if you don't know what you take notes for and you just take them because everyone around you seems to take notes, then it's very unlikely that you actually end up writing down the things that matter. How can we combat these problems? Well, first, practice. Note-taking is certainly a skill and without trial and error and like continuously improving your system, you probably won't be a master anytime soon. Second, trust. If you can Google it, don't write it down. And third, get clear on your objective. What are you taking notes for? Is it to prove that you have some sort of knowledge? Like in school when you take notes to later learn them to pass an exam? Well, then the focus clearly should be on whatever the certain parameters are for passing. Second very common use case would be to produce something else, right? If you take notes because you're writing a blog, you're on Twitter, you do it for your job, right? You need to publish something, then you need to focus on the sources and the ideas that you can then use to combine it into something new. And last but not least, if you start note-taking like me for personal growth, right, because you want to somehow improve yourself, then you want to really focus on the actionable takeaways. That's one of the biggest problems that I had in the beginning, right? I was focusing on all the insights and like uh, the facts instead of like, okay, how does this actually apply to my life? Moving on to the second step in the equation, how to write it down. The tool that we're going to use to build our Zettel custom today is called Scrintile. Scrintile is a new hybrid note-taking app that combines the best of a whiteboard with a traditional note-taking system. It's a really cool visual-first approach to note-taking that's particularly great if, like in Settle Custom, you have a lot of ideas and are trying to connect them. Scrint are also very kindly sponsoring this video. You can check them out using the link in the description and if you use the code MATTHIAS50 at checkout, you will get 50% off any plan that you choose. Let's open up Scrintile and see how we can build our simplified 
Zettel Custom System. This is how Scrinta looks when you open it up for the first time. A big empty canvas for your ideas. Now let's quickly go over uh, the core concepts of Scrinta before we build a Zettel Custom. You mainly will work on this area here, which is called your desk, and then you can add cards onto it. So you can do so by either pressing just the C shortcut or pressing plus and then adding a card and you can add it anywhere and then give it a title, my first card. And then if you press enter, you open it up and now you can add context to it. So think of it a little bit like a page in Notion with a title and then the things below. And also similar to Notion, you can use your uh, slash commands, right, uh, to get something. So I can get a heading for something important and I can press enter again and uh, add also some context. And as you can see, I have it in here and I have it also in small here on my preview. Now I can close off the editing menu here and then if I wanted to I can change the layout of this card right I can say I only want to have the, the title I could say um, I want a different color and then I can of course also move it around arrange it and have like similar to whimsical right uh, this dashboard a uh, whiteboard app uh, and can arrange these cards as I like them now the cool thing is that I can also create <laughs> of course several cards my second card open that one up again uh, and for the real cool thing in which makes it so perfect for Zettel Custom are now, of course, the connections. Bidirectional links are baked into the core of Scrintile and they are really, really powerful in combination with this whiteboard. Um, so you just type the plus button and then you can search for another car. You can, of course, like also have like my third car, right? And then you could create a new one, but I already, I wanna connect it to my first one, so I get that one. And now the first thing that you'll see is I automatically have this new section on my cards. So that's similar to Row Mortana, right? Where it automatically shows you at the bottom uh, where something has been referenced before. So I can see, okay, my first card here, and I can even uh, open it up and see whether the first card links to other things. Not yet, but I would see it. And then let's move this out of the way. I see that on my desk, I have now this connection between my first one and my second card. Now on my first card, I can also, if I open that one up, I also see that it has a backlink. So it shows me, okay, somewhere else. This was referenced and and of course i mean i can still move things around right uh, and the connection automatically stays alive so it's like whimsical but with automated links between the things that you want to connect what's also nice about screen is that it makes it super easy to edit multiple things at once right so i have my second card open here but i could now click on my first one or i can just click here right where i linked it and i can click on that one and now i have Two windows open i can of course also resize them and uh, could have like 10 things open simultaneously right so if i'm taking notes uh, during a call or a lecture or so and they're like different points right i want to take notes on i can uh, add them to their specific cards simultaneously and don't have to constantly switch between them now just two more things before we can start building our settle custom another very important concept in screen tile are tags so by just typing the hashtag simple we can open up the tag menu right now there's only one base tag in there but i could say okay maybe this is uh, organization um, and then i can also like mention the same hashtag on this side organization now we'll talk a bit more uh, later in the video about like how we can use these tags in our settle custom to build like really cool loops but for now, it's all that you need to know is that they exist. So just one last thing, and that has to do with the desk. Now, of course, it's an endless canvas, so I could just add an infinite amount of cards here, right? I can zoom out, I could have hundreds and thousands of cards on here, but that would get very cluttered very quickly. So what I can do instead is I can either press a shortcut, command, shift, backspace, or I can click on, I think, uh, right click here and then say clear desk, and then everything is gone. Now, of course, it's not deleted. All the cards that you create uh, are automatically added to your archive. So as you can see here, you have here in your recents, you see the two cards, and then I can also go to browse and my cards. And here I see all the cards that I've ever created, mainly untitled cards. And that would be a long list, of course, right, if you had hundreds of cards in here, but you can then filter by tag, by, by date, or like uh, just search for their content. So now that we know how Scrinter works, we can start building our simple Zettel Custom. In our simple Zettel Custom, we have three types of cards. We will have our input types that's everything that we get into the system right so it's ideas thoughts snippets quotes then second we will have output notes and they are notes where we've taken some of the information that has come into our system and created something with it that could be a summary at whatever stage of refinement you want to do that or it could be our own work right if we write articles tweets anything based on that that would also be an output note and last but not least we will have connector notes 
And these will really help us organize our system as it scales and they will mainly contain either sources or topics. Let's see how this would actually work. Here are my book notes from 4000 Weeks from Oliver Bergman, amazing book. They are just synced from the Kindle highlights into Readwise and I want to have this quote. So I'm gonna copy that quote and then I head back to Screentown and I'm going to create a no new note with, uh, by pressing C. And then I just will add the title or as the title, the quote in here. Oops, that's what we wanted to have. And then we can open up the note by pressing enter. And now I can add the author, right? So it was by Douglas Harding. Now I have my quote in here. That was of course super easy. So let's add a second note to make sure that we remember where this one, this quote is actually from where we found it. So I'm going to add my first connector note and this one will be the book. So it will be 4,000 weeks. And again, I'm opening it up and I will just then quickly add like Oliver um, Bergman as the author. Is it one N or is it two? Yes, one N, great. So now I have my oops uh, connector note and I have my first uh, quote note from that book. And then I just want to make sure that I know that this is from the book. So I will type in the connector and the main note, the, the plus button, and I will say, well, this is from 4,000 weeks. I have here my book, right? And I have uh, the connection that this uh, quote came from here. Let's just do a few more ones. So I'm just gonna drop it in. And of course, instead of dropping in the full content of a quote, you could go in here and like uh, summarize it at the top. But for now, I'm just gonna add them because they're fairly short pieces to the top. And then I will just keep connecting them to 4,000 weeks. Okay, now I have my notes here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I get a bit more space and I can close these off. And I can see, okay, now we have here 4,000 weeks and the four quotes that I have so far from them. I can also right click now the screen and then say, please organize my card so that it looks a little bit nicer and less chaotic. Uh, and that's the first step to make sure that we have all the things in there and connected. I of course read more than one book. So I'm going to add another connector note. So this is Range by David Epstein, amazing book. And in here, uh, I also have a few things that I would like uh, to remember. Let's move this away and then uh, create another card. And one of the things that I find really interesting is that, uh, that I learned in the book that compared to uh, normal scientists, Nobel Prize winners apparently are a lot more likely to have some sort of a weird hobby. So let's also connect that to range. Great. Now I have my connection to range here, but maybe I also want to make sure that I connect it to um, one of the cards in the other system. And this is where Zettelkasten really comes in because you don't just look for these obvious formal connections, right? The connection that a quote comes from the book, that's a formal connection. That's just about the fact where you found it. The real power of Zettelkasten is that you now then start also to think about, well, to what other cards that I have in my system could I create in connection? And there's no hard rules here, right? Like what do you connect? It really comes down to how your brain works and how your train of thought works. Because the end goal is not so much to have like every card with every perfect connection. It's more like that you always have like one, two, maybe even three connections and you can just jump between them, right? Oppose that to a system where you try to tag everything perfectly. Whenever you enter some information in it, you need to make sure that you really think of all the possible use cases. This one here is much more built towards serendipity where you, you know, jump from one thought to another and then maybe realize a connection between the first card and the card uh, 10 steps down the line that you didn't even know about in the beginning. Whenever you add a card to your Zettelkasten system, you wanna think about, well, can I think of anything else in my system that I've added just off the top of my head that I would want to connect with this? Let's actually look at the cards that we have in here. We have the, the passions uh, and we have the last thing that we are grateful for. We go with this one. Uh, the real problem isn't limited time. The real problem, or so he hopes to convince us, is that we have like a certain precondition towards how we should use our time. That might at the first uh, look not have much to do uh, with uh, the range one, but for me, they both are about having like some sort of a shared misconception, right? Something that's very commonly thought or like that's something surprising. Uh, I'm going to go in here and I will start connecting them. Now I have two options here. I can of course connect them directly, right? I can just open this one up and uh, then say, okay, uh, I just want to connect this to the real problem. That's one option. Or if I don't want to uh, do it that way because I might not be sure whether I can remember this train of thought in the future, I could delete that and instead create another connector note, sort of a topic one for this. So this one could be um, common um, misconception 
misconceptions, something like that. And now I have common misconceptions and in here it connect to common misconceptions. And now you can already see our Zettel custom come to life. We added two big connector nodes like our uh, books, our formal uh, sources. And then we added like a few thoughts that we want to remember from them. Like right now, just very simple ones, right? We didn't add any additional detail, but we have the connection. And then we also already thought about, okay, uh, from these nodes that I have in here so far, is there anything that uh, can be bridged, right? That can be uh, connected across different areas. And we created another uh, connector node in between to make sure that we remember our train of thought in the future. And that's what I really love about the system. It's super flexible. It takes no time or additional, you know, like thought process of how you want to structure things. You can jump right into it and just whatever it is that you decided, right, that is important to you and that you want to uh, remember, you can just add to it. And then in the moment you can think about, okay, what is something that I want to connect here and just add it. And then later when you find new connections, you add new ones. But you don't have this pressure in the beginning that you need to, you know, like have the perfect setup and already the perfect idea where this is going. With Zettelkasten, it's really more like an explorative journey. And like later down the line, once you've added a lot of notes, you will see of how all your things connect in an awesome way, but you don't need to anticipate it all in the beginning. Let's talk about tags. And tags are sort of my arch enemy when it comes to any personal knowledge management system. They are the thing that you always start out with and then you try tagging things by a lot of stuff. And then you realize like a few weeks later that you're drowning in tags and have no idea what you're supposed to use. So I sort of stopped using tags to categorize stuff according to topics, right? I do no longer tag things as productivity or something like that. And instead, what I do is I use more this loose connection with Zettelkasten to hope that somehow the topics emerge. And instead, I use tags for what something is. So a lot more of a formal organizational aspect. So what I tag things by are usually either the type. So in that case, it could be something like a quote or a book or I tag something by a stage and then it more or less cycles through tags, right? So for example, if you were learning something, you could tag topics by the stage that they're in, right? If you are good at them, if you master them, or if you still have to learn a lot, or if you're summarizing things, you could use tags to uh, mention the part of the knowledge cycle your current in uh, your workload cycle, right? So is this something that you just read? Is it something that needs to be summarized? Have you done a first uh, summary? Have you done the second one? Have you written like the final product? And with these more formal tags, it's a lot easier to, in the beginning, define what you want to tag by and then stick with it. And don't run always into the situation where you have like hundreds of possible things that you could tag something by and it actually doesn't really help you at all. Now applying this here would of course be super simple, right? So we can go into our two books and say, uh, oops, I want to add it to main thing actually uh, and say, well, this is a book and I can do the same for range. And then I could add my quote tags to the quotes. And then whenever I look for quotes, I can pull them all up or if I look for my books, I can pull them all up. One of the cool things of working with your Zettel Custom in Screentile is that it is, after all, a whiteboard. So it is this far more visual approach to your note taking to organizing the knowledge after all. For example, if I have it cleared out now, I can just go in here and I can look for my 4,000 week note. I can drag it in here and then uh, I can zoom in a bit, of course, and can say, okay, show me all the links that I have here. And then on the sidebar, we see everything that this card is connected to, even though we don't have them on screen right now. And I can then select two of the cards and say, well, add them please as well. And I have them here, let's zoom out a bit. And I can then rearrange them, right? And because it's a whiteboard, right? I could uh, create any sort of order that I want and make sure uh, that I have this yeah, visual representation here. What I can do as well is I can right click and I can create columns and I can name them. So I can say, for example, if I want to create a Kanban board because I need to study something, I could say, well, to learn, I can click on save and then I can start dragging cards into this. So as you can see, I can then start sorting them. And if, as long as they're in here, our other connections uh, disappear, but they're still in the back end, right? And if I then click on my, my columns, I can add more columns and so on. And I can, of course, uh, drag and drop them between them. Another nice thing that you can do is if you have a setup that you want to preserve and that you don't want to have to recreate every time, for example, this simple uh, Kanban here, uh, you can uh, select everything that you want to save and then you can right click it and then you can say create board. And this will create a snapshot uh, of this and you can rename it. So for example, this could be my uh, learning progress board. 
And then uh, even if I clear out my desk, right, if I say, okay, nothing uh, should be on here, I still have my board and I can just click on it and that pulls it up and then I have the same setup here again and I can work from it. And even better, you can also pull things from a board, right? So if you work in a specific setup and then you have like, for example, maybe in one board, you always save like your current reading list. So all the books that you're currently reading, you can just like drop that board into your desk area and then directly work from there. This was of course, just a very short and quick example of how to start building at Settlecast. The more things you add and the more connections and the more free flowing thoughts you add to it, the more powerful it will become. Just be careful that you don't fall into the scarcity mindset and write everything down because if you clutter it up and then you just throw in a lot of unnecessary things, it will create so much work that you can't focus on what actually matters. And as you can see, screen time is really a perfect tool to build at Settlecasten due to the powerful bidirectional linking and the endless canvas where you can really rearrange all your cards. This is one of the things that I miss in Notion, the option to have things a little less structured and instead move to this whiteboard free flowing arrangement. But of course, it is also possible to build a settle custom in Notion. And I have another tutorial for you right here. Check it out next and then see which of the tools you prefer.